We're live. Hello, hello. 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 Hello, everyone. First live show on my channel. Have some special guests today. I'm just posting. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Here, I'll take a picture. It's a good idea. I'm not ignoring everybody by looking down. And there we go. <laughs> I think it just popped up, so I think it's officially live now. Oh, okay, there we go. Woo! There's more. Oh, I'll like here. No, Bree's like here, here. <laughs> I'm, I'm like here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. How is everyone doing? What are you guys reading? I'm posting that we're live. <laughs> Like if you're wondering why we're not talking. Not you're wondering why there's silence for a second. Oh. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we'll start by introducing ourselves. I'm Sam from Books with Samantha. Really excited to be here. We're going to be talking about Love Only Once by Johanna Lindsay, which is our book club pick. And then I just finished it yesterday. I was very late to the game. <laughs> um, and then right now I just started um, The Duke Who Did It by Courtney Milan. I just started it this morning and I'm liking it so far. I think Jess, you read this in a reading vlog, right? Yeah. I didn't watch it because I didn't want spoilers. So I was like, I'll watch it. Exactly. I watched that reading I was vlog. A little so. Oh no. In that one. But you might like it. A lot of people do like it though. I've seen a lot of people like it. All right. We'll see what my thoughts are for that. <laughs> All right. So now when Jess like doesn't like a book, because she's just like, yeah. Yep, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're not funny>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Take it away, Jess. Um, hello, I'm Jessica from Peace Love Books. Um, I'm reading on my Kindle, um, All Things Burn, which is a hitman romance. Ooh. So Jody Slaughter. And this is my first book by her, but it's good so far. I'm halfway through. She has a stalker, so she has to hire a hitman mm -hmm. to kill her stalker. Cause he's like threatening her family now. And so she's like, I gotta get rid of him. So yeah. It's contemporary or it's contemporary? Yeah. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh, we, oh, maybe it's the laptop. She said she would have some technical difficulty. <laughs> I never understand when like the host leaves and how, like, how <laughs> it works. I can't how is this working? control anything, so. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll introduce myself. So I am okay. Brie. My channel is In Love and Words. I read a lot of romance. And what am I reading now? I, I just finished um, the new Sarah J. Mass. And so my brain is a little bit off. <laughs> Hi, Samantha. I knew that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> we just kept on going. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just finished the Sarah J. Mass book, but I am currently reading, oh, what is it called? Absolution. It's a third book in the Grace Trilogy by Autumn Gray. And that's the one where it's uh, it's a forbidden romance between a guy that is going to school or whatever you do to become a priest, and then a girl that he like grew up with. And then it's 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 not as taboo as priest is, but it's like it's more forbidden than it is taboo. And it's a three book trilogy, so I'm on the last book. <laughs> Um, well, I'm Brie. Also, when I, <laughs> I'm on Instagram at Falling for Romance, I am not actually reading anything right now because I finished something last night and I just haven't picked up anything. But I downloaded like a Harlequin Blaze Kiss and Makeup by Taryn Lee Taylor. Um, I've only read one Harlequin Blaze and that was like Tiffany Rice and it was really good. So I'm excited for that. So yeah, Tori, I just responded in the comments, but my lights, my galaxy lights turn on at eight automatically. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to go with it. We're going to go with the vibe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I read the audio book too. Me too. It was good on audio. Mm -hmm. Oh, for this one, I've never listened to any of her audio books. Mm -hmm. I think it, it was either on Scribd or Hoopla for me, which was nice. Mm, yeah. I read Gentle Rogue on audio, and that was good. Her audiobooks are good. Okay. It says in the intro. Was this your, have you guys read Joanna Lindsay before? Was this your first? Yeah. This might have been my first, actually. I have to check it. <laughs> 
Hold on. <laughs> it was my first. <laughs> I you just like, really like authors, that. like authors that I think our generation reads. I always hear so many of them say like her, Kathleen, mm -hmm. wife, I think like they're mm -hmm. who they picked up first. So I've been wanting to read something by her mm -hmm. something that I finally did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like this was my first. I think I Kathleen read a couple like, by her, um, but this was the first that I actually rated highly. Really? Oh, really? Really, Samantha. <laughs> oh, the tea. Oh, Samantha. <laughs> but they're like the original, like historical r romance authors, and like Kathleen Woodowis, I think. Which one is hers? That Rose in Winter, I think, is like her most famous, possibly. I don't know what the the title of that one is, but this was 85, so. Okay, I was gonna ask, hey, that was the year I was born. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you youngins. <laughs> I do wanna do a video of reading historicals the year I was born. I haven't done it yet. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That would be fun. I think Dana did one like that. I love that idea. This is a little before I was born, but. <laughs> <laughs> born what year were you born, Jessica? Uh, 93. So, nineties baby. Yeah, but everyone else is younger than me. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not you, but <laughs> not me. He was uh, pretty young. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's true. This was my fourth Joanna Lindsay book. And How I think would you rank it among the other ones that you've read? I don't know if I liked it the best or not. I need to talk about my feelings about it. Okay. I really <laughs> like it. But there are some parts I was like, mm, maybe mm -hmm. not. I don't know. So I, Bri, I might feel like you, because you gave it a four, right? Mm -hmm. I saw it. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we, what, what did everybody rate it? Tell us what you rated it. I gave it four and a half. Mm -hmm. I couldn't give it that five star because a little something at the end, I was like, mm, I don't know if I like where that was, but I think what you're talking about. You know, what I'm I feel like we're, we're we. I think there was something revealed at the end that I was like, oh, "Gosh!" So I think I would do maybe four star, maybe like three high, like high three four stars. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I am. I'm like high three four star, but I always round up anyway. So, hmm. so okay, this is like. I have a bunch of old school historicals on my shelf, but this is the first one I've actually read. So what, since you read more of them, Jess, like for newbies into old school historicals, what are some of the things that you, like a disclaimer, if you had to put it out, like what is to be expected? Cause I was like, I'm reading this very much in a woman in 2021 lens, I think. And so there was a lot, but it was like just so, ridiculously addicting at the same time. Like, it felt like reality TV. Yes, and I feel like a lot of the old ones are very soap opera, like kind of melodramatic with like the drama that goes on. And it's not so much in the ones today, at least in my opinion. Um, I was so happy, in my opinion, there was no questionable consent. Yeah. Everything she was there for, which I appreciate. I appreciate, I was expecting there to be because of how old this was. I don't know with her book. Mm -hmm. One of them, A Pirate's Love, I think, the entire book was him just like taking what he wants and she didn't like it. Okay. And then she fell in love with him. And so I was like, stop it. It was like a majority of the book was just like all of that. This one had none of that. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised though, because Gentle Rogue is her, her most popular and that's book three. That's with um the pirate, which I didn't even know that was him. I was like, oh my gosh, it's oh, him. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so his book is the most popular and I didn't like it because everybody loves Georgie. I liked her a lot better than Georgie because she actually like was very headstrong. Reggie was, I don't like how they have like similar names, Georgie and Reggie, but um, I liked how her character, I don't know what you guys thought about her. I liked her. Yeah. I liked, it was, it took me, I was like, who is Reggie? It took me a while to realize. <laughs> Oh, Regina. <laughs> um, I really liked her. I just thought like one minute she's very like headstrong and like brave. And I'm like, okay, I really rock with you. But then when it came to Nicholas, there were times I was like, stop letting him walk all over you, girl. <laughs> like, stop. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> We're just gonna cheer every time you come back. <laughs> So my laptop broke this morning. For those of you who don't know, it was an old, old MacBook. So I guess this laptop doesn't like the stream. <laughs> it's like not today, Samantha. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> okay, you guys are talking about the ratings, right? Yes. yes. Okay, cool, cool. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we all set our ratings. What's your rating? Oh, okay, I gave it a four star. Okay. Um, it was definitely my favorite, Johanna Lindsay. I read uh, another book in this series, and I, I think I like this one. I really like the heroine. Um, mm -hmm. And then I loved that it didn't have like the consent issues that a lot of the <laughs> Johanna Lindsay books <laughs> usually have. <laughs> so just for that, I, it was a four star. <laughs> so what yeah. did you think, Sam, about Reggie as like the heroine? I really liked her for me. Like she made a lot of the book. I liked how she was very like, um, not dramatic. She was like, you know what? I don't need you. I can handle the situation on my mm -hmm. own. Like basic. And even when like he kidnapped her, she was super chill about it. Like she didn't even cry yeah. she didn't fuss about it. She's so, like, when you find out that you got the wrong person. <laughs> yes. I'm just gonna chill here. Everything's fine. Um, and then our hero, he reminded me a lot of Sebastian. I told Jessica this, but he reminded me a lot from of Sebastian from the Wallflower series, like just that rakish personality. Um, I liked him though. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't grovel nearly enough, but I did, I did like him a lot. Mm -hmm. I did. And I loved the family dynamic. I loved her uncles. Oh my gosh, I loved her. That's what like saved it for me was the uncles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. See, to me, part. like the uncles were like so good guys that I mean, I had issues with Nick Nicholas mm -hmm. that they made him look so bad. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "It's like you're a combination of all of them, and that's why I love you." And I'm like, "Is like, mm, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, it was kind of weird that she kept comparing him to Anthony. I was like, okay, like it's, it's not your uncle. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> The I whole scene where she gets like kidnapped onto the pirate ship and everything, mm -hmm. like that, I thought it was so freaking funny when it ended up being her uncle. <laughs> and they're just like, hey, <laughs> it's like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was my favorite part. I mean, I know a lot of people are talking like Bridgerton, but it gave me a lot of like Bridgerton family dynamic vibes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like how they were very overprotective of Daphne. Like they were very overprotective over Reggie. Mm -hmm. And I liked that. Mm -hmm. I liked that a lot. Um, Anthony gets the next book. Yes. So uh -huh. okay. I want to read that now. I'm yeah. Gonna... They, I think they all get their own stories. I for sure know the pirate does because that's Gentle Rogue. Yeah. I was so, because I read Gentle Rogue at the end of January. So when it was like, oh, my uncle's really the pirate. And I'm like, oh, and I did not connect that it was the pirate that he had met and got beaten up by. I was like, I should have because I've read the book already and I yeah. know he's a pirate. I didn't connect that though. So I was shocked when it was like her uncle was the one that had kidnapped her the whole time. So. It took me a second to connect it as well. Um, for being the first in the series, they made a lot of references about like the other characters, which was surprising. Mm -hmm. um, I think Gentle Rogue was the favorite, like everybody's favorite in the series. But for me, this one, it was actually pretty good. Because mm -hmm. I think that in Gentle Rogue, Georgie just like got pushed around a lot. And I feel like Reggie got pushed around less. And like, I don't like the whole pregnancy trope normally. I didn't mm -hmm. mind it in here because she didn't tell him. And mm -hmm. I liked that. I mean, she should have told him, but she did it. And I liked that. Yeah. I think there was even in the book, she had said like that she wasn't going to tell him because she didn't want it to be the thing that made him stay. And I was like, oh, I love that. Like, mm -hmm. that's such like a clear headed thing to think, especially during Regency time when so many people could have completely like ruined her reputation but like wasn't she also trying to make him marry her so True. i'm like why <laughs> wouldn't you tell him <laughs> yeah. i feel like she was trying to make him marry her like because of the kid but also she didn't want that to be like the only reason yeah that he loved her or didn't love her yeah the other thing i was confused about was he was like his whole parentage thing and how he didn't want to be with her because he didn't want to like ruin the girl or whatever i'm like so 
but he's doing everything but telling her that to get rid of her. I'm like, if you want to get rid of her and you think that's going to make her run, then tell her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the only other thing that I was like, mm, I don't get it. Yeah. I think that's what prevented it from being a five star. It was just mm -hmm. so low stakes. You know what yeah. I mean? They were already married. Like, right. Your parentage at that point doesn't matter. It's not like you can get unmarried at that mm -hmm. time. The whole time. Yeah. <laughs> like I have a secret to tell you. Like, oh, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> I just feel like it's just like to compare it to Bridgerton with Anthony and the whole like B, like not wanting to get married because he knows he's gonna die. It's like that was annoying to me. And then this one, it's like, oh, he doesn't want to marry her because he's a bastard child. And I'm like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. No one cares. <laughs> not being annoying and just like this already. Like it's annoying thing that he was doing that's keeping them apart. And that's literally the only thing. So that did annoy me. Mm -hmm. And then that he he leaves for what like seven months? <laughs> He's like, bye. But then the uncles go after him. <laughs> no, get your ass back here. <laughs> it's like, what is happening? <laughs> there were were there weird time jumps to you? Like, I don't know if it was just me, like my mind wandering off as I was listening to the audiobook, but it felt like there were weird time jumps. I didn't realize he already had a baby. Right. Like when did that happen? <laughs> yes. I, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, like how they're like, oh, well, it was such an easy pregnancy and she didn't even care, like show until like seven months. And I'm like, you understand the time period, right? Like I'm pretty doubtful that her, for her first pregnancy, she was like sneezed and it popped out and right. that was perfect. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> The whole pregnancy thing just added to like the reality TV dramatic feel mm -hmm. for me. So I'm like, really? Your first time you're pregnant? And then the whole big secret at the end, I was like, ooh, like struggling to get pregnant. Affair happens. And like the first time they do it, there's a baby. I'm like, oh, this is so ridiculous. And I love it. I know. It was, it was sucks you in. Yeah. yeah. Someone else said that it sounded or it read like a soap opera. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, it does. But that's why I like it. Like, <laughs> I really like the dramaticness of it all. Like it totally on a different page, but um, the initiation by Nikki Sloan, the Filthy Rich Americans, that's how I felt about that series. Like it's so dramatic and over the top, but I could not stop reading it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That and that, yeah. I literally <laughs> felt like yesterday. So yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, a series on my Kindle. I need to read those series. Everybody was reading it, so I'm like, okay, I have to see what this is about. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand now? <laughs> I don't know how much I liked it. It's part of a vlog that I'm doing. I like, oh, well, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they made a huge deal about them, of her not showing. And Is that, I mean, I don't know. I've never been pregnant, but is that, like, possible for you, like, not to show at all? It is. I had a friend, actually, like a good friend of mine. She, her baby was just very small and she didn't show until like, wait, like I showed like immediately with my first <laughs> one and just got huge. I looked like I had triplets by the end, but I do have a friend who like didn't show very much at all, like but very I, well into her pregnancy. Uh, so that Nicholas would doubt her and be like, well, no, you didn't show when I was like with you. So there's no way I'm the father. Mm -hmm. We didn't have like pregnancy tests to prove. Yeah. But they did constantly talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that he would give uh, a little bit more of a fight of like the kid being his because he was gone for months, and like the possibility of that happening just the one time mm -hmm. is a little unrealistic. But it's okay. We'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> for I the do sake of the had drama. more time together though, because on page they didn't mm -hmm. have a lot mm -hmm. of time. Yeah. yeah, it really wasn't the romance that made me like it so much. It was more like everything else that was happening that I really liked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The uncles were the best part. I, <laughs> I actually read a couple of reviews and a lot of people said that they didn't like the uncles. They thought it was, it was really? kind of creepy. They thought it was kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just thought that they made it fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I love big, big, loud, like intrusive families like that who are funny. I like that in books. So that's, I think it depends on your preference.
The one thing that also I did not enjoy was the mom plot line and how mm -hmm. she was the villain because she couldn't have kids. Mm -hmm. That yes. kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I didn't like that. And then that just became her whole character. And she, they never like reconciled. It was just like she was still angry that she yeah. could never have kids. And because she couldn't have kids, he went off in that. And I mean, that's the time period. Like they want kids to like carry on the title. So that's why the husband did have a kid with her sister, which I wasn't actually expecting that. I did not think it was his aunt. Right. No, I didn't think so either. Yeah. I didn't like the mom's character and how the author did that. Mm -hmm. Sam. Yeah. yeah, she wasn't that. I mean, because you felt for her. You felt bad for her, if anything, especially when you found out it was the sister. You were like, no, does she was mad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like her own sister. She He couldn't have found literally anyone else. <laughs> That's True. a tough spot. Like, who do you forgive? Like, this is your husband, but this is your sister and oh and then you have this like odd like for the rest of your life you will see this person and be reminded of like what happened so mm -hmm. that part was horrible <laughs> and especially because he loved his aunt so much and was always saying like that was a second mom to him like can you imagine how that made her feel even worse yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so I, I get why she was why she was upset I just I don't get why he thought um Reggie was gonna think it was such a big deal that she that he was um illegitimate mm -hmm. yeah yeah no one else question. cared yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i didn't get it either <laughs> when they're right now, like why he is the way he is who cares i know is that your dog He's dreaming. Okay, <laughs> he's sitting oh, my right now. I was like, my, he's literally dreaming. Pirates. <laughs> he's so funny. The little puppy. He's so cute. I love all your posts. <laughs> he's so freaking cute. He's also very bad too. <laughs> I feel like it's not just a puppy phase. My dog, we've had him for like four years and he's still. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like the few more modern historicals that I've read, like the whole plot isn't centered around like the heroine wanting to get married. So when I got like started this one, I was like, oh God, is this going to be one of those stories? Mm -hmm. Am I not going to like it? And I mean, she wanted to get married, but she wasn't going to take his crap at the same time. Mm -hmm. and like, I like, I like yeah. seeing that in like an older novel. Yeah, that was refreshing. Oh, and we almost had a duel, and I'm just like another one. Happened <laughs> <laughs> in the Duke and I, and I was like, I never read duel books, and now I've read like four. <laughs> <laughs> that was so similar to the Duke and I because yes. he's friends with her uncle. I what was his name, Derek? Derek? Yeah, mm -hmm. friends with his uncle. They have like a situation where she's compromised, so they're forcing him into marriage. There's a duel. Like it is so similar. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how that happened. And she doesn't she didn't she blackmail him into marriage? I don't remember. Uh no. I think her uncle just threatened him into marriage and okay his word or whatever. And so yeah. It was very similar. Yeah. I do agree with that comment though, that I wish there was some sort of like reconciliation at the mm -hmm. end. Or like if she still was just like, well, I still hate you and I'm gonna be the villain still. It's yeah. like, yeah. Talk it through. Yeah. I don't know. Or even like her and Reggie. Like I didn't I understood like because Reggie was the new countess. Countess, was that her title? I think so. I don't remember. Yeah. I didn't like how she just came in and was like, yeah, you have to move all your stuff out of the house you've been living in for 15 years. Like, <laughs> I feel like she could have had like a better relationship with Miriam. Like Miriam, and yeah, she was wronged. She was done dirty. <laughs> like if they became friends, that would have been nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Especially since they spent months in the same house, they could have like formed some type of friendship, but no. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do think a common trope, though, in historicals, Brie, I don't know how many you've read, but is like they need to find a husband, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it was funny, though, how she's like, fine, if you don't agree with anyone, you pick me someone then, which I really <laughs> like. You're finally just fed up, like, well, I need to marry, so pick him for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was funny. 
Oh, her land. I forgot about that. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. He was pretty much like bribed into it so they could have that land. I remember that now. Yeah. I knew there was a reason. Which, I mean, that's not the greatest reason, but it's a okay. case. <laughs> Can she rearrange the house and left? Like, what? <laughs> 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 so ridiculous. It was so dramatic. <laughs> this was one of the most dramatic books. Like I can definitely see this being like a telenovela, like just <laughs> and, um oh you know what else I noticed uh from reading this one compared to even some of the other Johanna Lindsay books I read? I feel like it was very repetitive. Like how many times did our heroine say, what did she say? Stuff? Or shut up. Oh, stuff, yeah. I was like, why are we saying that every single chapter? <laughs> I was like, is this her like replacing a cuss word? <laughs> I think so. Oh, scene. Which one? That is oh, gosh. One. What happened? I don't remember. Or <laughs> when he's jealous of the baby breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think at one point when they were having like sexy times, he was like, I can't go in that region because it's the baby's territory. <laughs> <laughs> it was just bizarre when he like breastfed the baby while she was sleeping. Oh, wait, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I don't know where she comes up with that, but it's very interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I do think it was funny that she named the baby after like all of her family and then just gave it his last name. He's like, why would you do that? She's like, well, you weren't here. So <laughs> you, <didn't want. laughs> you snooze, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though like I hated Nicholas at the same time, like he just made the story. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> I guess I'm like, you are terrible, but you're going to get away with it. So. <laughs> Super like, dramatic. You, you like left for seven months. Like they were not on the page at all this book, it felt like. And, you know, <laughs> Nicholas gets his way. <laughs> all because he's an illegitimate child. He's a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Like, does it work that way? Can that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it can. What? Just plopping the baby down and having it drink? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think? As the hero. What did we think of Nicholas as the hero? Brie, I know you love groveling. I do. I, wasn't <laughs> I, I just felt like, do you think of Nicholas as the hero? <laughs> Brie, Brie. <laughs> <laughs> he was fine. I mean, he wasn't my favorite hero. And yeah, I do wish there was more groveling. But again, like the the big, I don't know, there was, there was no reason, like there was nothing super bad that he did. Oh, it was just that's weird. Yeah, it was just, just left. You know, right. <laughs> And, but like, and no. she didn't care. Like she didn't seem to care very much either. So I'm like, I mean, neither of them really cared very much. Yeah. Yeah, I think they just needed more on on page time mm -hmm. um, for them to fall in love at the end so quickly. It was like you guys spent like maybe a month together total. That's it. Mm -hmm. That is true. I did like though how it started off with him kidnapping her and how yeah. he was trying to like kidnap a mistress, like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if to get back at her because she was trying to make him jealous. And I'm like, you're crazy. Like, and he has so many mistresses, too. And then when his mom invited all the mistresses. Oh, 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 you are messy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, like, being in that room and just, like, knowing but not being able to say anything? Uh-huh. <laughs> And having to talk to them though, because the one lady was like, "Yeah, it was after I like my husband died." Yep, and I was like, "You're talking to his current wife." Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so awkward. But mm -hmm. yeah, and what was it? Selena what was that her name? Yeah, Selena. 
Okay. How she kept on trying to like get him back, even though he was married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I didn't like her, but if I felt like, again, like relating it to Bridgerton, it was like Anthony with Sienna. And I was like, Oh, the names are so close. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. This reminded me so much of the Duke and I, I didn't rate the Duke and I that highly though. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I, it reminded me a lot of the first Bridgerton book. a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're in multiple book clubs, how do you keep characters straight? Sometimes you don't. <laughs> I only read the book right before the live show. <laughs> so I haven't even read my next books yet for next week. <laughs> yeah, I finished this book yesterday. So, mm -hmm. How do you all pick? Or like, how did y'all? Because I know you have them scheduled. Mm -hmm. Like, How did y'all mm -hmm. pick the picks? We chose the authors that were popular and then what we owned by them or like what we heard the most about. Okay. So this is the first in the series and this is one of her most popular series. And you had read Gentle Rogue at the time. I had not, right? Yes, I read Gentle Rogue right before we started that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I went with that one. Yeah. Yes. And, and then whatever one. Anything before 2000. We wanted like all old school historic romances mm -hmm. to compare them to maybe like new school historic romances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like this or uh, Night Song better? Oh, Night Song, a thousand percent. <laughs> That's very, really, very really different though. It's not, I see when I think of like how I rated them, because I give Night Song a five star. And I gave this one a four star, but I just think Night Song was like leaps and bounds better. Just mm -hmm. the writing, the setting. But I love Beverly Jenkins. She's mm -hmm. a favorite of mine for sure. Yeah. I think that was more of like a thoughtful story. This one was just a dramatic, fun story. Yeah. <laughs> this was fun. It made me laugh. But I don't know if it was like my favorite book. Like if I if someone were to ask me like what is a historical romance I should read, like they're beginners, I don't know if I would recommend this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think if they were to ask what should I start with of the older ones, maybe this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. One to suggest, but not like historical romance period. Yeah. What books would you guys recommend? If it's like a beginner historical romance reader, what is like the one that is your go-to? For me, I would say Indigo like Beverly Jenkins. That's mm -hmm. just the best <laughs> that you can start with. Mm -hmm. I like that one too. I'd say anything Tessa Dare. To say that oh, true, true, true. because it reads like more contemporary and i think that's what trips people up a little bit is like the world building and not knowing like what is a duke and what does that mean in relation to everything and hers just it's all very straightforward mm -hmm. my first was forbidden by beverly jenkins that's all i always tell people like start with that one <laughs> you have to read that one yeah, um, you made me read that one. I watched one of your, I think it was one of your videos, and I was like, oh, I need to read that one. It's, it's so good. Yeah. Indigo is wonderful too, though. I mean, mm -hmm. I liked okay. Indigo. But yeah, like like you said, Brie, like that was a misconception I had. I was like, it just felt like historical romance was going to feel really old. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the new the stuff that comes out now, it feels like contemporary, just mm -hmm. a different time period, and I love that. Mm -hmm. And they feel feminist as hell. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I do agree that The Secret is a really good old historical romance. Oh, yeah. That one's good, too. I forgot about that one. I have to read more of Julie Garwood. Are we, are we reading a Julie Garwood? I don't know. What's, I don't next, know. what's next month? What's next month's our next topic? Next month is Judith McNaught. It's okay. um, Once and Always by Judith McNaught. Okay. Yeah. Someone said that they're cousins, so I don't know about that. <laughs> I, that. I read the synopsis and it was like her distant cousin. Oh, okay. God. At least they're distant. <laughs> we did not know that going in. I just want to put it up there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A lot of people are saying The Secret was like one of their first. Mm -hmm. I haven't read that one yet. I'm super excited for Shanna, though. Yes, by uh, Kathleen E. Mm hmm How do you guys pronounce her last name? Widowis? Widowis. Widowis. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I saw a comment. Uh, here it is. He said that it, it was like the first book in a series where it built the family dynamic. And that, that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it led into all of the uncle stories. Um, now I want to pick the next one up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Reels you in. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we're all gonna ignore the cousin part. We're just gonna ignore it. <laughs> it didn't happen. They shouldn't even have put that on the book. <laughs> that was normal though. Like people married their cousin. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. I think in the book it even said like one of his mistresses, like it was a debutante and he ruined her reputation. So she married like a cousin or something. So it must have been it must have been normal. I don't know. Um, like Jane Austen. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think it was like, I was like, a girl gets kidnapped and now she's got to worry about her reputation. You got kidnapped. <laughs> I know. Like, how is that your fault? No, that's not your fault. <laughs> different times, different times. <laughs> but like, oh, and that's, I was going to bring up what is up with gardens? Like, they always get up to really bad things in the garden. And I'm like, this is still a public place. Like literally anybody, he's like, oh well, they were at the bench, but I don't know if we'd fit. And I'm like, anybody can walk. Oh, and then not. And like her, I forget who it was, like a friend or something, walked out of the bushes and was like, oh hi. And like there was rushing, <laughs> wrestling in the bushes behind her. I'm just like, guess the garden was the place to be during this time and period. Didn't mention what happened in the bushes. Like who was she with? Oh, I wonder if she was with one of the next like characters, like in the books. Maybe I don't know. Uh, there's always a garden scene and there's always a bath scene because in night song there was a bathtub sexy times and in this one there was bathtub sexy times so <laughs> something about those two places <laughs> Thank you for all yeah so and I we know. only have the first six books picked out so far for the book club if you guys have any recommendations, anything published before the year 2000 is fair game. Are there authors that y'all are like really excited to read or any that you're nervous to read? Mm, I'm nervous to read Kathleen E. Woodowitz because I know some of her books have consent issues. Like that was always the challenge when we were picking our first six books is we didn't want to pick anything that had consent issues. And that's kind of tricky when you're getting to older historicals. You don't yeah. see it so much for like the books now, um, but some of them have. So like we had to skip some Johanna Lindsay books because of that. And yeah, so that's, I'm nervous about that. And it's always nervous because you don't read the books before you pick them. Right. So when you pick yeah. like a horrible book. Yeah. Or like I didn't even start Night Song until like super close when we were doing the live show in the prologue right away. It was like that really graphic scene of her loved one dying. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, we can't give any warnings about anything we're reading because we haven't read it yet. So, yeah. yeah. I, I would love to be able to give trigger warnings, but I mean, we honestly read it like with you guys. I read this one yesterday. Same with Nate, Night Song. I read it like the week before the live show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that like, because y'all both read a lot of like historicals that come out now. I think it's, really kind of important to read some of the bad stuff from once upon a time to like appreciate what comes out now so if it slides in there like sorry guys they didn't read the book before <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah yeah i just like wonder why people liked it i don't know like it's like it was a staple in the genre and i'm like yeah. as a reader, i don't like it when the hero's forceful like that's not attractive and it's just like did people find that i guess it's kind of like alpha heroes though i mean yeah. contemporary some people just like the douche alpha heroes <laughs> yeah okay so this like um i don't i don't know if you guys have read it and i did not finish this book the san mariano one he like literally sexually assaults her in the beginning and it's like a 50 page scene and he's the hero and i'm like i cannot i can is it a dog it's a uh, it's Untouched Life Things by Sam Mariano. Um, okay. Lots of people have read it and really like it, and so I was like, oh, I like dark romance, and they're like, oh, this is a dark romance, and it's like, mm -hmm. I don't like <laughs> hero. Like that's my limit. I cannot do hero yeah. to violate or sexually assault the heroine, and I'm supposed to be rooting for them to get together. Yeah. I cannot do that. See, for yeah. me, it's about the grovel. Like even that, like, I don't know, sexually assaulting is mm, too much, but like for like bully romances, I can't do them unless the hero grovels like Helen, most of the time they don't, yeah. so. Yeah, I think that's the thing with romances. Everyone has their own like trigger warnings and things mm -hmm. that they will read. So it's always find, hard to find like one book that everyone can like 
a right. book like this is a great book because everyone's going to have a different opinion, which is fun, which is fun to like hear people's different opinions. That's what I love about like the book clubs in general because like someone mm-hmm. gets something five stars and then someone else will be like, no, that was a one star read. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I do want to read Virginia Henley at some point because she has some really pretty covers. Yeah, maybe we'll add her to the second half of the year. Mm -hmm. I do have a lot of her books. I don't know what it's called. I have one with like a pirate on the cover. Her and the heroine and a pirate on the cover. Yes. And then something, I think Dream Lover, I think it's like just a yellow cover. Or I'm like, maybe I'll I'll read some Virginia Henley this year. (laughs) Y'all, I'm nervous. I was so nervous when we picked this book because the other book I read by her was Fires of Winter. That book, I I won't read that now because you absolutely hated it. (laughs) I never call books trash, but listen, that was a trash (laughs) fire. Trash (laughs) fire. Sounds good because they talked about the parents in the second one, Hearts to Flame, and I was like, ooh, I want to read their romance. (laughs) No. She gets assaulted in like chapter one. Like, oh my the god! Of the a hero? Uh, no, by oh. someone else, and then it gets interrupted because they're Vikings, so they like raid her town. But I mean, he assaults her throughout the book too. It's it's bad, y'all. It is so bad. I, I don't know where it is. I think I gave it away. <laughs> oh, Pi- yeah, Pirate in the Pagan. I think Pirate is that is that by Virginia Henley? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Really pretty cover. She has like four that I think one of her books was used for the new Gentle Rogue cover. Oh. oh. Yes. So I think it was the Hawk and the Dove. I don't know what my copy is. They used that same exact image and changed the color of her dress and like changed the color of something and used it for the new Gentle Rogue cover that Avon just published. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's funny. It was Hawk and the Dove. Isn't he Captain Hawk or something like that? Oh, I haven't read it, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, what about if another guy who forced himself on the woman, not the hero? I mean, that could be triggering if you read it for like mm-hmm. people who need sexual assault triggers, but that doesn't bother me personally because it's not our hero. So, yeah. If our hero saves her, that's even better. But. <laughs> Okay, so we need a pirate book, Jess, for the after we finish our first. I have. I was reading, doing a pirate romance read blog, and then I got distracted by everything else, and then I never. <laughs> I read Gentle Rogue for that, and I was back in. Yeah. You love pirate books. What's your favorite pirate book, Jess? Um, I love Sea of Ruins, but that's like a recent release. I haven't. Oh, I want one. that one. So you good. did like it, Bree. I want it. I haven't oh, read it. You haven't read it. Ooh, I'm interested to see what you think about it. <laughs> I want it. Isn't there time travel in it or something? See, everyone? Mm-hmm. I know it's pirates. I don't know why I thought it was time travel, but um, <laughs> everybody's posting it. I'm like, I need this book. I need it in physical. It's so copy. pretty. Dark. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is dark. It's It gets graphic in parts. And there is a questionable scene between our heroine and one of love interests, and I don't appreciate that. <laughs> the rest of it was really good. Johanna Lindsay has a time travel one. She does. Oh, um, I think. Oh, which Warriors Woman was that the one? Mm-hmm. And it's the cover. It's like way in the back, back of my shelves, but it is the cover is so pretty. I have it up there. I have all my Joanna Lindsay like on. Oh, nice. Her good. covers are just so pretty. Yeah. Do you take notes while you guys are reading? I annotate my books. I mark them all up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I just started this year because I'm trying to keep track of like trigger warnings and tropes and things that are in it for my reviews and stuff. Yeah. I try to write a review right after I read. Mm, that's my. That's what I try to do too, but I just. Not very good at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no! Oh, <okay>. Sorry. <laughs> I like highlight and write WTF and draw <laughs> parts. <laughs> you, I would love books? to read some of the, your books that you've annotated. I'd love to look through them, see all your I'm notes. Looking through them too, like years later, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I was so lame. <laughs> I feel like 
like that would be so fun, like having a book club and then like annotating it and passing it along. Yeah. That's what I do. I have a little book club with my sisters and my mom and we pass the book around and we each annotate in a different color. Mm -hmm. Even if you do sticky notes, if some people don't like writing in books, for me, I don't care about writing in books because it's like mine. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna, they're on my shelf, so I don't mind having like them a little be up. Mm -hmm. Same. Do you and your sisters and your mom like the same genre? Um, for the most part, like we have some overlaps. My sister and my mom really like historical romances, Regency in particular. And then um, my other sister really likes contemporary and she reads a lot of YA too. So there are some things that we overlap and all like, but we all each have our own different things. Like I probably read the darkest stuff. My dad really likes rom-com. <laughs> he won't admit that he's in our book club, but he definitely is. <laughs> he's in such denial. <laughs> my sister just got into like, reading really and like she got a kindle and i'm like what are you reading and she's like telling me these names of these she was binging t teasing oh really yeah, yeah. i was like oh how did you discover this author wow I'm loving it so i'm like you need to watch this person's video watch these person's videos and she's loving it so. It's so exciting when someone gets into it. It's like yeah. a whole new world for them. <laughs> well, and now it's Bridgerton. So I have like some coworkers are like, hey, like I watched the show Bridgerton and I wanted to read the book. And I'm like, they're like, have you read it? Like, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my boss asked me about the series and if I had read it because she wanted to borrow some of the books. And I'm like, well, yes, I have read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was excited. I was like, this show is going to bring so many people into romance. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we shall see. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like it honestly has brought so many people to like read romance and start book clubs. And it just, it makes me really happy. And I'm super excited for the second series, uh, second season. Mm -hmm. It has invited annoying journalists writing trash articles about it. But of course, like, <sighs> I just can't with that. <sighs> I get so heated whenever I see people like make comments like that, but mm -hmm. whatever. It just what looks so uh, pretty. Uh, Kate casting. Did you guys see that? For oh yes, she mm -hmm. is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. It just, I was like, it just goes to show, like, I feel like at this point, like screenwriters have run out of content. <laughs> I'm like, there's whole genre, like all the work is done. You just need to make right. a book or so. And like, cause that turned out wonderful. Like, I don't really read much YA anymore, but the To All the Boys I Loved Before series, like I'm still not over all three <laughs> movies. And I'm like, come over to romance. There's tons of books out there for you to draw ideas from. Like, yeah, put them on screen. Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins did get sold. It's right did. And then it just like, nothing happened it was like two years ago i know that happens a lot it's very yeah. sad like why would we that, that would make a beautiful movie like mm -hmm. a beautiful movie um i don't think i've read any gothic historical romances no brie i think you have haven't you yes i the thing like they can be the lines are kind of blurry because sometimes they're more mystery so I know us as romance readers, if we go into it for the romance and that's lackluster, we're not happy. So just be wary of that. They tend to be more kind of, I guess, romantic suspense, but like, I really love like Phyllis Whitney, um, Victoria Holt. So that's old school, but there are authors now that are writing them too, but you gotta do some digging to find them. Victoria Holt, that sounds so familiar. Does she write Westerns too? Um, she might have. She's most uh, the mistress of Melon, which is actually a pretty good gothic romance. She wrote that one. Ooh. Oh, the widow of Rose House. Yeah, I saw. I think late did Lacey read that one. It had a really pretty cover. Mm -hmm. I haven't read that one yet, though. You just read the book to get into the book club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, you, anyone can join. We have an Instagram where we announce all of our live shows and we already have our first six months planned. If you want to get the books ahead of time, you can listen to an audio, ebook, physical, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And there's tons of book clubs that you can join as well. There's a lot of book clubs going on right now. There are so many. And um, lots of them are interviewing authors, which I think is really right. cool. We can't because a lot of them aren't alive anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of them still do write, actually, but they aren't writing historicals anymore. Like Julie Garwood, I think, is still publishing, but she writes romantic suspense and not historical. Yeah. But Joanne, oh, oh, all right, Keith. Oh, puppy. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you hear that, Yon? <laughs> Do you just hold him when you don't want to watch him? <laughs> yes, because otherwise he's eating things. But he gets very tired around this time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> big God. Uh, for Justin, read The Mistress of Mel. It's M-E-L-L-Y-N. I know some people read it for school back in the day. Also like Rebecca, Rebecca by Daphne DeMarie's like a gothic romance. A lot of people were reading that when, when didn't the movie come out? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Which I haven't watched the new movie, but Alfred Hitchcock had an adaptation that I had to watch in eighth grade when I read the book, and it's fabulous. So watch that one first, maybe. So we're going to need a pirate romance and a time travel romance for our next book picks after we finish reading the next four. I'm going to see what y'all find for time travel because I didn't know that that, that historical romance authors were writing it like that. The only the one I know is Johanna Lindsay. Sorry, Jess, go ahead. I don't know if this, it's like, it has like the hourglass. I think that means it's time travel. Oh. Okay. Huh. That's a pretty cover. It's a Viking romance. I got a ton. <laughs> Of Viking romances because I want to do a reading vlog. So they're all Vikings. Have you all still been ordering from eBay like crazy? Have. <laughs> 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 no. I low key though, I Jess, I have some beef with you because I feel like there were such good eBay finds, and then you like tell people where all the good books are. So now they're all gone. <laughs> I have also gotten to an eBay war with Desiree. And <laughs> I wondered if that's happened. Like, are they bidding on the same books? Yes, we are. <laughs> we need to come together and not force each other to drive up our prices. One that Desiree was betting, I bet in the very beginning. And then I was like, oh, I like I owned a couple of books already. And I was like, I can't like make the price worth like two books and then like three I already own, so it's fine. And then she posts on Instagram like a week later. Look what I just got for me, babe. <laughs> I want to have and Lacey and I were bidding. We did not know we were bidding against each other for one, and she won. That's funny. <laughs> but I this know. one I think is a um a alien. Like it's not an alien, but it's like a different planet. It's like old school Ice Planet Barbarians. Frozen Land, yeah. It like reminded me of Ice Planet Barbarians. <laughs> okay. It's a clear of tropical borderland. And he needs to escape his icy imprisonment. Who is that by? Um, Trudy Thompson. Okay. I love it. Yeah. It's a futuristic romance. Ooh. You have to let us know how that one is for sure. Yeah. We may have to try it up. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to some uh, Ruby Dixon audiobooks, so. <laughs> Getting back I in. just got a library card and I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen you post that and I'm like, where You're not had one? One? <laughs> No, I didn't. I and the saddest part is is that everyone has told me to get one. Like I can't even pretend like I didn't know. And I have a library like down the street from me. So I was just in a sad world. <laughs> I was paying a, the $8.99 for Scribd, which was dumb. <laughs> My library, I just got a library card where I teach, which was so mm -hmm. smart for me because you can like alternate between your libraries on um, Libby. And they have so many more audiobooks in my other library. Like they have like 20 Ruby Dixon audiobooks. Dang. So you can use your work address for that? 
Uh, you don't even need to provide an address. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to live in the area. And but I did so like I can get I think longer checkouts by being a teacher. Um, mm -hmm. But for a lot of libraries, you don't even have to live there. Oh my god! Sign up for it. Yeah, I think it's because of the pandemic. Like my mm -hmm. libraries that were near me, they're not even asking for like ID or anything. They're literally mm -hmm. just asking like first and last name and zip code. Um, or at least mine were, and that's it. You can pretty much download or borrow any mm -hmm. audio book. I think it's different if you want like a physical book. I'm sure you have to maybe yeah, it is address. But to use the digital library, it's nice. I mean, then they mailed me the card, and I don't live where I teach, so they can anybody can get it. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I have one for Houston. I, I hate Houston. I, I never go. I have one for Chicago, one in Kansas City where my dad lives. Just like <laughs> everywhere where I have family, I'm like, hey, I'm getting I a library card. <laughs> oh, that's smart asking family because my mom doesn't listen to audiobooks or anything, but I wonder if her library system has better selections on like Hoopla and Libby and stuff. Or they'll have no weight and like your library will have a weight, mm -hmm. but theirs doesn't. And yeah. Yeah. Like the library I use in Kansas City. Like they'll show like that if a book is has like two weeks before it comes out, I can place it on hold. Whereas the ones here, like I literally have to wait for the day. That's what mine it. is. Yeah. And then it's already like a six week wait. And I'm like, just show me ahead of time that you're going to have it and I'll put it on hold like this other library does. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe wait. we should all get an LA card. I know. <laughs> Justin, you're not far from me. I feel like there's so many people in LA. We just need to have a big old meetup. Have you been to the Rip Bodice, Samantha? No, I have not. Uh-uh. I want to yeah. go there. How far is that from you? Uh, a little, like about an hour. So it's really not. Oh that my far. gosh! How yeah. have you not gone? I know. It's not like your store. <laughs> I just have so many book uh, stores next to me that I'm like slowly making my way. I do need to go over there. I do. But now with the pandemic, it's hard to go yeah. anywhere. Mm -hmm. They would have a lot of really good author events there. Yeah, That's true. I feel like I just started reading romance so late. Like I miss all of the fun author events. I feel like you've only read historicals. But then you said you've only been reading them for like a year. And I'm like, how? <laughs> I started reading historicals when you guys did your first historical readathon. So March. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How have they not always like been a part of your life? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's sad because like I've been able to collect all of these books in a year. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. We've been doing a lot of self-isolation hauling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, lucky just Oh. How is it? Is it magical? <laughs> Did they what? have a youth section? I thought they had a youth section too at their bookstore. I don't know. What author events do you guys or did you guys used to go to regularly? If any, a like big a polycon? <laughs> yes. And it was canceled last year and this year. Mm -hmm. <sighs> But it's fine. And see, I started reading it late too. And like I hear of all these author events that used to happen in San Antonio. And I'm like, well, I live here and I read romance now. And there's nothing. And there's nothing. <laughs> I've only been to the Polycon once, and that was when it was in Orlando because I'm in Florida. Mm -hmm. And that's like two hours away from me. Oh wow. Yeah. And that year was awesome because they had a Polycon and Shameless. So it was like mm -hmm. one right after the other. And I went to both and it was so much fun. <laughs> KissCon would be so fun. The one mm -hmm. that Avon puts on. Now that I like read all the historicals, I was like, I need to meet all these people. <laughs> and it's usually in Chicago, right? I think so. I don't yeah. know if they ever switch where it is, but. I wanted to go to that one. It doesn't matter now. I know. <laughs> those people will have those back. I know. I wonder how they're going to do events like in the future. Is it all going to be digital? I don't know. Because we were just talking today how much longer like they'll we'll wear masks like forever is what it feels yeah. like. Like, is there ever going to be like an end date to like, even when we were thinking like next school year in August, we probably will come back to school with masks on. Yeah. Well, in California, we're not even back at school. We're still digital. That 
is crazy to me. I've been in person since October and I could not imagine still. Yeah. We're still digital. It's there are still a lot of districts here that are digital, but we are not. And then they got vaccinated and then they're still refusing to go in person, <laughs> which our governor is very angry about. But yeah. I don't know how true it is, but I heard Book Bonanza, the one Colleen Hoover puts mm -hmm. on, that it might happen wherever hers is. I think like Dallas or something. In Texas, yeah. So I was like, Maybe if I really want to get out the house, I'll go. <laughs> I want to be around people. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's half wanting to meet the authors and half also like, I just want to meet everyone. I know. I know, like just to hang out with everyone, with you guys and stuff and see you in person and just That's like. That's what Polycon was. Lacey oh. and I meet up every year. That's oh. where I met Desiree, the last of Polycon. Yeah. <sighs> but no. I want to go. Oh, never what? mind. That oh, no. Was oh. I would be surprised if that was still going on. Yeah, she would get a lot of pushback on that, I think. Yeah. There was like a different book convention that was like going to happen soon. I saw that. And everyone was like, are you kidding me? Seriously. Yeah. But I don't know when it's going to be okay again to have those things. Sad. Mm -hmm. Convention for I don't know what that is. Oh, I haven't. That magazine. Okay. Oh, the Romantic, the romantic Times? They had a oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I love when I get an old, old historical and there is like that um, paper where you can like write, write <laughs> in to get. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like 20 years expired. I'm like, can I send this in? I <laughs> mine always like the little bees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Those. Those are. Isn't it crazy how cheap books used to be? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I'm the cheapest when it comes to books because I have one bookstore where mass markets are one dollar and hardcovers are two. So I'm like anything that's over five dollars. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you expect me to pay how much? Mm -hmm. Even this though was uh three ninety five. Oh my god! That's a hard cover to find. I don't have the original. Mine is pink. Mm -hmm. I bought a huge lot on eBay like a year ago. <laughs> of all Joanna Lindsay, though my Tender Rebel has the sticker, and I'm oh. so annoyed. Is a Tender Rebel the one with like the side? Yeah. Profile of him, and it's the sticker's right over his butt, and I'm just like, what is why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't take it off. They like, perfectly placed the sticker there. Cause I guess people were mad. Yeah. Just remind me later. I think I have a duplicate for that one. Do you? I'm pretty, I'm like 90% sure I have a duplicate. Yeah. I have, oh, let me grab it. It's so frustrating. <laughs> I just love seeing oh, how tender is a storm. good condition these books are that you all get. Look. Oh, my <laughs> oh I have that one. I have the hardcover of that one. Yeah. <laughs> There's no sticker on it, which is nice. You know what happened? Oh, wait, it comes in hardcover? Mm -hmm. oh. All of her books are in hardcover, too. You know what happens to me all the time? I don't know if my bookstore just, like, likes to mess with me, but they will rip out the step backs. Wow. Oh. That happened to uh, an Elizabeth Lau book I got, and I was so mad. I get the book, and you can see that the step back was torn out. And I'm like, why? <laughs> That's the best part. Oh, this yeah. isn't a sticker sticker. It's like part Printed. of the cover. Yeah. Print it that way. Mm -hmm. It just looks so weird. Yeah, that is it does. And you can still see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> like, we all know what's happening. <laughs> right? It's just like, now you're aware of what it's hiding. It's like drawing your eye to it. Even <laughs> Oh my gosh, we've already been on for an hour. That's hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> well, our next month is this one, Once and Always. Mm -hmm. And we are having, I don't know what to call it. What is the, the book squad? The romance squad? The romance book squad, yeah. Yes. Everybody from when I did the Bridgerton read-along and they're doing the Victorian oh, Rebels, nice. all four of them will be joining us. Oh, and that'll be fun. And that's going to be on Jess's channel. Yes. 
So so this is almost 400 pages. Yeah. Do you remember what day Jess is the live show? I uh, the 20th, right? I think, yeah, I think yeah. so. We'll post it. We have an Instagram historical Hellions. We'll post the time as well. Yes. For you guys. If you want to read it with us, Judith McNaught is our next book. Yes. And is this your first read Judith McNaught or have you all read? Huh? Other, have you read other Judith McNaught or is this your first? This one's my first. I read Kingdom of Dreams and I really liked it. Oh, I lied. This isn't. No, I read. No, I read a lot of Judith McNaught. I, <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I did a whole reading blog where I read like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <It happens. laughs> um, I gave Kingdom of Dreams five stars and then all of her other books I've given two stars. So we'll see where this one where this one lies. Did you read Win Winnie, my love? Yes. I gave it a two star. <laughs> Did you read the original or the republish? The original. Sadly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly. She took out a lot of scenes and added some things. So. Yeah. Judith McNaught has very alpha heroes. So I'm assuming this one is the same. But yeah, I didn't like Whitney, my love. Or I, I read the whole series and I, I wasn't a fan of it. Was one of them amnesia? One of them was Amnesia, yeah. It was um, Until You. No. Okay. Yeah. Lacey loved Whitney, my love, so. <laughs> <laughs> that face. Samantha, not so much. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. A lot of people love Whitney, my love. I'm just messing around. <laughs> Have you guys read any um, Judith McNaughts? I don't think so. You haven't read Kingdom of Dreams? Mm -hmm. That one's good. That one's good. Mm -hmm. He kidnaps her. So if you like the kidnapping trope. I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so do you guys have a favorite historical romance? Samantha, I think yours is Indigo, right? Indigo like by Beverly Jenkins is one of my favorites. And then, again, The Magic by Lisa Clapis is also I know, that one's good, too. My favorite. I talk about that one all the time. I love it so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about you, Jess? Um, I just did my video of my top 10 historical romances. Oh. Um, I don't know if I can pick, like, a one all-time favorite. I love The Highwaymen by Kerrigan Burn, but I have yeah. to read that because it's been a long time since I've read that. I think it's been two years since I read that one. I think I actually like The Hunter a little bit better than that one. Do you? That one was good. It was yeah. good. I think so, too. I, I like The Hunter a little bit more. Just, I just a little her. bit. Yeah. Do you guys have favorites? It's probably either The Hunter or Notorious Vow I really liked. And I read it because of the historical romance readathon. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. I love, of course, Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And... Surprisingly, Eva Lee has this book, Scandal Takes the Stage. Mm -hmm. And the whole series is like women writers. So there's like a gossip columnist, a playwright, and then a woman that like secretly writes erotica in like Regency times. Oh, and so one that Scandal Takes the Stage, she's the playwright. And I just loved it. It was so slow. I was like frustrated. And then at the end, I was like, oh, this was so good. So <laughs> I don't think I've read, I might have read one of hers. I don't remember. I love her covers. I have her books, but I haven't read them yet. So now I need mm -hmm. to. Dreaming of You, um, is that with, oh uh, gosh, what's his name? Everybody loves that. Yeah, Derek. Derek, yeah. We're reading the first book in that series for our book club. So I haven't read Dreaming of You. Neither have I. I know Crystal loves that book. <laughs> A lot I of people want to read. Um, I've heard Lacey talk about it. Lord of Scoundrels. I oh, really yeah. want to read that. By Loretta Chase. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. like that one. I want to find that cover, that gorgeous cover. I can't find it anywhere. Um, Megan from Boops and Boops had like two copies. Do you know who that is? Yeah. On Instagram. She it's finds like, everything. She, I don't know where her bookstores are. I'm like, girl, I need to live with you. <laughs> she drives a long way to get to them, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, does she? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I don't drive that far from my bookstores. <laughs> I have that cover, though. You're, so you actually get a lot of your books in person. See, like, I don't have 
We have half price books. Mm -hmm. Their romance sections here tend to suck. So yeah. like, you have to use like eBay and thrift books. And I mm -hmm. never have any issues with thrift books. I hear a lot of people say they have like bad experiences, but I've yet to have one. And I get free books now because I order from them so much. Same. I know I have a free credit right now. <laughs> me too. But yeah. it's hard to find a book under $5 though for me anyway. Not for historicals. They're all under $5. Are they? That's good. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should look there for historicals. Better World Books has a good selection too. I keep yeah. on getting library copies from them. I'm oh, really? Yeah. Oh, do you really? Doesn't it say though? It says X library on it. Uh, yeah. And then a lot of them don't. Oh, <laughs> so really? oh, no. one time it was like half my order were all X libraries and none of them had said it when I ordered it. Oh, that's annoying. I've had the opposite happen. Like it will say library and I'm like, oh, it's fine. I really want the book. And it will come and be like the hardcover. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you got um, the Night Song. Yeah, yeah. Night song yeah. I got all of these on thrift books. I got Vivid. Do you have Topaz? No, I have Vivid, okay. Night Song, and Winds of the Storm. Okay. I got a bunch of Beverly Jenkins from Better World Books recently like a bunch of them and they're all in really good condition but thrift books it varies because like their books will be five dollars and then the next week it will be higher like if you look mm -hmm. i just was trying to get a kerrigan burn book there and it was twenty dollars yeah like, what the <laughs> hell one posted a hardback of the duke and i for eight and i was like what and then as soon as i got there it was gone and now they're like a hundred and i'm like who was posting and that was today i was like who's posting this book for eight dollars <laughs> yeah well, I get a, I get a lot of like people asking like where I get my um, Lisa Kleypas one because I found all of the Lisa Kleypas like the where passions leads like all of that was through thrift books too. So thrift books comes comes through. You just have to you just have yeah. to. I think you can put like notifications when things go on sale. Yeah. Yes. I never put all on there looking for something new because they're gonna have the same price as the Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But that's where I get all my cozy mysteries too, because I can't find cozy mysteries in my bookstores. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a half price books. That makes me sad. You know, me neither. I have five. <laughs> Whatever, Jessica. <laughs> I'm always so jealous. I'm like, she always gets good stuff from half price books. And I go in and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Where are the romance readers in San Antonio? <laughs> Sometimes I don't find anything, but it's, it's like one week I'll go to one, one week I'll go to the other. By the time I cycle back, it's been almost a month since I've been there. So <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Do you ever sell books to them? I have before and they give you like a dollar. So no, <laughs> like for 10 books, they'll be like 75 cents. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And you feel bad saying no. So you're like, oh, fine. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. My bookstore doesn't give you money for it. It gives you store credit. So if you give a book, you get a book essentially. Ooh. Um, so I don't mind doing that. But most of the time I feel bad, like reselling books to bookstores. So I just, I just give them to my little free libraries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't know how people feel about it. I don't sell books that like publishers send me. I feel yeah. weird doing that I know people do do that but I'm like no they sent it to me for free I'm not going to mm -hmm. turn around and sell it so I usually donate those if yeah. it's YA I'll put it in my classroom but or I'll host a giveaway or something but yeah Lisa, yeah. <laughs> Lisa coming in <laughs> an hour and 13 minutes <laughs> hello Lisa hi Lisa how are you <laughs> we love Lisa yeah. Lisa, you don't even buy any more books. And you're yeah, fine. Yeah. You can never have too many, Lisa. Go ahead. Buy some Loretta Chase. <laughs> I just love when she shows like the stack of books on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple stacks. <laughs> Her whole your whole channel could literally just be like a book tour. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to yeah. not have any room to sleep in her room at some point. <laughs> She's going to have to sleep on her books. <laughs> How do you guys organize your books? Is it alphabetical, by author, color? So mine is by genre and then alphabetical by author last name. Okay. 
Mine's very organized. You are what is yours? Uh, genre. Oh, genre. And then like authors together, but not alphabetical. Yeah. I can't keep track of that. Um, so like hardback, paperback, math market. <laughs> <laughs> and then I try to keep, you know, authors. There's books together, but that's about it. My husband like did them in ABC order for me one time and it drove me nuts. Cause I'm like hardcover, paperback, mass mark. I was like, no. that's what drives me crazy is that it's like all uneven and everything, but I can't find them if I don't like put them in some sort of order. Cause I have so many. Mm -hmm. So, but it does drive me crazy cause it does look pretty, but that's why I did it by genre so that they look similar. Like the YA fantasies all kind of are around the same size. The YA contemporaries are around the same size and they tend to look somewhat similar, but yeah, it drives me crazy that they don't look alike. <laughs> yeah. I had mine organized by color, my historicals organized by color, and that was impossible. I could never find what I was looking for. I do not know how people do that. It looks lovely, but yeah. yeah. My mass mark, not my mass market, my traditional like hardcovers and stuff, those are all um, by color, but it's not double stacked, so I can like see everything. But my historicals are triple stacked, so. <laughs> <laughs> Genre and author. And piles. <laughs> and right at this point. Pile one, two, three. <laughs> my thing is, Lisa, like, your books are so expensive in Canada. That's what yeah. my house is for. Oh, my gosh. I sent a box of books to my friend Sarah in Toronto. And I was like, geez. It was like over $20. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa comes on and she immediately gets attacked. <laughs> like when Charles pops on to a video. <laughs> I was looking at buying the Illumicray, um special edition covers for Sarah J. Mass's series. They're gorgeous. It's, it would be crazy expensive. It's like 18 pounds for shipping. And that's like converted over $20. Do they have special edition, edition covers for all of them? Mm-hmm. Oh, why'd you tell me that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the one <laughs> for Silver <laughs> Flames is gorgeous. Oh, no. I don't think they revealed the other ones, but the Silver Flames one is just so pretty, and they're all going to match, and it comes with all the dust jackets and a copy of uh, Court of Silver Flames. But oh, it's like... Why am I going to buy it now? <laughs> <laughs> it's from the UK. Is it pre-order or is it not? I think, so. I think they are, would ship out in March or April. I don't remember. I hate my life. <laughs> Why is it that the UK always has the best editions? They, they have, always do. They have the sprayed edges and everything. Mm -hmm. Like the um, the Caraval series. That was so pretty, the European edition. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for it right now, Brie? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find how much it was because I converted it. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. I just been ordering from Book Depository. I haven't ordered from them in a long time. Oh yeah, it's been a while since I ordered from them. Too. And they were cheap. I mean, it was cheap. Yeah. It's been a long time since I'm like, I've seen a cover that I'm like, I oh. must have. It would be $82 for the box of wow. one book and four other dust jackets. For $82. I, like, I don't know if I, I can like <laughs> is it the Court of Silver Flames box or is it a different one? Um I think it is from Illumicrate. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is the cover if you can see. It's so much better. <laughs> and it this is the whole dust jacket. It is oh my gosh, so, that's gonna be stunning in person. So pretty. That's Compared to the ugly one they published in the US. <laughs> yep. $82 just to have pretty covers, though. How many historical romances I could buy with that money? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's come down to. I'm not going to say anything because I spent like almost $40 on that Lisa Clayfist book. <laughs> it just sold on eBay for $58, and I was like, hmm. That's not too bad for that book. <laughs> oh my god! You. One book? It's impossible to find. I want to grab it so I can show it. Off. Impossible. Yeah, I haven't seen it for less than like one fifty. 
It's one fifty right now on thrift books. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have one I found one for two dollars, and I was like, I don't like you. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name. There's an historical romance that I actually wanted to buy and I can only find it for like easily $120. But I guess the author like wrote two books and then died in like this car accident. It's called The Silver Devil by Teresa Dennis. And anytime I see it, it's like easily 150 bucks because Silver I Devil two books. And I'm like, I just can't, <laughs> can't bring myself to get it. The one I'm like considering spending that much, not that much, but enough on is the three armed women by what what proceed to god i don't have that and i can't find it every time i got I it for like six dollars on ebay every time i buy it it's the other edition with regular two hands <laughs> well what happened was like i ordered it and it was that cover and they sent me this like four dollar edition that wasn't that cover and i was like what the heck like it was listed as the other one. He's like, oh, sorry, I'll refund you. And then a week later, he's like, guess what I found? The right copy I was supposed to send you because he had two copies and um, then he sent it to me. So, yeah. I was just looking up the Silver Devil. Oh, I, I think it has like some issues in it, but I'm just like, I want the book. So <laughs> you want the book because it's pretty? No, I just, it sounds good. Um. And just the fact that she only put two books out and then I guess died. I'm like, I have to have it. <laughs> yes, that is it. it. I actually got it on Scribd back when you were able to like do some tricks and download eBooks to your phone from Scribd. So I still have it downloaded, but I want it in physical copy. Okay, so this cover, she like naked, naked. And <laughs> it was so funny. My younger sister came into my room one day and she goes, why do all the guys like why are they naked in all your books <laughs> and I was like oh because it's a romance like that was my answer and she was like but well, what does that mean and I was like I was like they're on vacation like because one of them looks like, they're on and I was like, they're on vacation like just it's fine it's fine <laughs> I was like I was reading ball peen hammer and that one and is one like yeah, it, and that one is like a magic mic romance. So it's a male stripper. And my daughter asked me what it was about. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they go on a road trip together. I mean, I didn't lie. They do go on a road trip together. <laughs> there are many, though. I just got this one, the old school romances, where like they literally are naked on the cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine that coming out today? I know. Oh How do we make that happen? And when I like post pictures like on Instagram, my dad will be like, that step back though. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that like we're a group of people that love the covers because I always see like, oh my gosh, those old covers. And I'm like, dude, I I'm so like in the middle of the road on covers, like I don't care. <laughs> They're like campy a little bit. Like you kind of yeah. love them for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. $10 mass market book for collecting. <laughs> that's a good limit. I feel like that's mm -hmm. a good limit. I, I normally spend, if it's a special edition, I'll spend up to like $10. That Lisa Clapis one just really got me. <laughs> almost like if you can't find it, it becomes like an obsession. You're like, mm -hmm. no, I need to find this now. All right, I feel like I can talk to you guys for hours, but I think it's getting late on your guys' end. It's only like six for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to let the puppy out. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Today. Yes, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you yes. for having us. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, next live show will be on Jesse's channel for the Judith McNaught book, okay? Yes, yes. So join us then. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.